This is Saturn Farm. It's an agroforestry farm in East Central Illinois. And our main crops here are black currants. Today is our second mechanical harvest of black currants on our farm here. Plants are four years old now. Typical black currant farm, your spacing between rows is usually around 12 feet. And that, that's kind of the minimum to get the mechanical harvester to fit down those alleys. The standard practice is to put in this orchard mix of ground cover but it's not providing anything really for the farm. It's not providing a really great habitat. It's not providing any money and revenue for the farm. So what we decided to experiment with here on our farm is could we do anything else in those alleys that could provide some other benefits to the farm? We needed whatever we put in the alleys to be perennial and to be compatible with the machine harvester. So in July, when we come through and harvest the currants, we're driving down these alleys with a tractor and a harvester behind it. And so if whatever we're trying to grow in the alleys is just gonna get smashed by the tractor, uh, that's not good. So that led us to a couple options. First, uh, we have asparagus that we've put into the alleys. And asparagus is harvested around here, typically in May. The second crop is rhubarb, less flexible than asparagus, but stays quite a bit lower to the ground. So those were the two kind of edible options that we went for. The, and then the third option was less providing a revenue benefit to the farm, but actually providing a habitat benefit to the farm. So we seeded a native pollinator prairie mix uh, into the alleys. So after driving the harvester uh, through the farm today, it was really interesting to see how the different alley crops reacted. So with the asparagus, uh, we saw on some younger asparagus that were still pretty flexible, they did exactly what we thought. They, they kind of bent down as, this, as the harvester passed over and then just popped right back up again. You couldn't even tell that the harvester had come through. We had some asparagus that was a year older and was bigger and a little bit stiffer. Uh, the asparagus did break a lot at the base. And so it's not great. It doesn't look as good as when it just bounces back. So overall, I would say the asparagus is a pretty good success, but it remains to be seen exactly what the, the long-term impacts are of breaking some of those stems in the patch as the harvester goes through. The rhubarb, I think, was the most promising result of the day. Uh, the uh, rhubarb was still quite low to the ground, and so uh, even on larger plants, uh, the, the stems were able to bend enough, and the harvester was able to go through uh, without any problems. Yeah. It's not snapped like the asparagus. Didn't seem like, really, actually, any of these treatments negatively impacted the growth of the currants at all. We did see uh, a change in the shape of the current plants, being a bit taller and narrower, which actually is great because the taller the plants are, the higher up on the stems that the berries are, the easier it is for the harvester to get to them and shake them off and not miss them. The second impact we were looking for in the currents is increased disease pressure. To date, at least, we really have not seen that at all. So when we think about adding complexity and adding additional crops or mixing crops into a system, certainly what we want at the end of the day is higher revenues, higher yields from each acre. However, in order to get that, you don't necessarily need to have higher yields from each crop when you do that mixing. So for example here, if we're adding in rhubarb into alleys between black currants, when we do that, we could end up with lower black currant yields because of competition or something, and we could actually end up with lower rhubarb yields compared to the expected yields in a monoculture setting. But because we're actually growing those on the same acre with some of the same management, some of the same fertilizer, you can actually get what's called overyielding compared to the monocultures. When you add them together, you're actually getting more yield, more revenue. When you start creating a more complex system, you have to look at the system as a whole, not just those component yields.